Hello again, hi, my name is Vicky and this is a video on progesterone suppositories or as you may by know by the brand name, Suplogest in the UK. This video today is split into two parts. In this clip I'm going to talk about the medicine, its role in infertility treatment and how it fits in my daily routine. Like the previous videos I have done on infertility injections, I have done this video as an aid memoir uh, for patients who have been prescribed this treatment for infertility. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about today is um, why you've been prescribed progesterone. Now, progesterone is a hormone uh, that is naturally produced in your body uh, after ovulation, after your egg has been released on roughly day 14. Uh, the progesterone levels will uh, rise up and the, the progesterone is there to thicken the lining of the uterus, make it nice and comfortable so when the fertilised egg goes in, uh, it implants and off you go. Um, if no fertilised egg turns up, the progesterone levels start coming down and then you have a period. So the next question that would natural arise from this is if you produce it naturally why on earth have you been given it in the first place um, because there is a chance that you may not be producing enough progesterone um, in, and when you think about it you have not had a normal menstrual cycle either uh, up to this point for IVF treatment you've had a hormone to uh, down regulate your ovaries you've had a hormone to then hyper stimulate your ovaries to produce lots of eggs You've then had a hormone, the trigger, the trigger hormone, to um, um, ma mature the egg in its final stages for uh, 36 hours, and then you've had egg extraction, where you've had a needle go up and then poke your ovaries and then withdraw the eggs. So really, not a normal menstrual cycle. Um, so these are almost a, sort of a safety measure, just to make sure that you don't miscarry and you, you know, we're, we're giving your egg the best possible chance of implantation. So the next question is, how long do I need to take this? You need to take this until at least your pregnancy test. I was given one by my clinic, it looks like this, one test, and I have to take mine, um, I think was it day 11, I've had five day uh, blastocyte transfer, so I have to wait for 11 days until I take that. Um, assuming that the test is positive, um, that's great, fantastic news, yes you do need to carry on. Um, you will need to take it for a few more weeks to pre uh, prevent miscarriage. If your test was negative, um, then you will need to stop. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, the progesterone suppositories itself. And the first thing you may quickly think is uh, what to do. Uh, no more injections and what on earth do I do with these? Um, you can use this uh, vaginally or rectally there's a choice it doesn't matter which one you pick you just pick whatever was right for you um, each box contains about 15 suppositories I've been told to take 400 milligram which is one of these and I've been told to take it twice a day um, preferably at 12 hourly intervals so that's actually not as easy as it sounds but I've actually made um, I've actually managed to work out a routine that works best for me at about uh, roughly about 6 uh, six a.m., 6 p.m. each day. And what I do is I keep um, a strip of these um, on my bedside, so about half an hour to one hour before the alarm goes off, um, I'll pop one in, and then when I get home in the evening, um, I'll pop the TV on, watch an episode of Friends and I've have, and I'll pop one in then just before I start getting dinner ready. So that works for me, but you've got to find something that works best for you. Uh, the first day uh, when I used it that was quite interesting um, day of egg extraction you're a little bit woozy a little bit out of it and I just about managed to remember to uh, insert one just before I went to bed at night about roughly about 11 o'clock that was fine for the weekend um, but not practical for when I went back to work um, really didn't want my colleagues to catch me with my legs in the air at 11 a.m. so I've had to sort of make a few adjustments so it took me a few days to uh, work out a routine that works best for me. Now rectal or vaginal? Um, <laughs> personally I prefer uh, the vaginal route. Um, well, I do have a slight problem with the rectal route. Um, 
first thing in the morning um, I do like to go to the toilet and have my morning ablutions and that's when I normally go to the toilet then for number two. Not very practical if you want to put the uh, suppository in because the first thing I want to do is go to the toilet um, and you need time for it to absorb. So that's that's not something that's going to work out for me. Um, it would be very uncomfortable for me to do it first thing in the morning. It may not be the same for you, but there are other people I know, like myself, first thing in the morning, they do want to go to the toilet and use that end. So um, whatever's best for you. I think if, the, if anything that I've learned um, from this as a lesson, um, work out a 12-hour interval that's best for you before you start taking these. Um, it took me a few days to settle but you need to factor in a time for you to lie down obviously put something in and not move um, I know we're all very very busy um, and it does happen um, we have very hectic lifestyles we've still got to run around we've still got to keep up and uh, do our sort of usual routine but work out something that's best for you um, and that's the end of the first part of the video. Um, I hope you will join me for the second part. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, hints and tips on how to administer your suppositories. And um, thank you for watching and uh, all the best of luck.